All right, how's it going, y'all? So today, this is the long-awaited finale to Synology for Photographers, Synology for Photographers Part 3. And this is going to be probably the last episode, and it's really going to be focusing on using Lightroom and Synology to be able to access your raw files from the past 15 years wherever you are in the world without having to carry around a 200 terabyte hard drive with you. If you've not already watched part one and part two of this series, I would really recommend doing that first because we're basically going to be jumping right in, assuming you have already done that exact setup. And so just to do a quick recap, essentially what we're doing is we are storing all of our raw files on the actual NAS. So this is a Synology NAS, and this is gonna be a tutorial in Synology, but really this can work with any other NAS as long as you can set up the VPN and everything like that. Now we'll go over here in a minute. And so essentially what we're doing is we are storing all of our raw files, and this can either be your entire raw file catalog from today to when you started shooting, or it can also be just your archives. So stuff from the past two years and things like that, depending on what your network setup is and how much performance you need. For example, if you really need the utmost performance and you don't really have the ability to do wired ethernet to your computer, then what's a very common thing that I set up for people is you keep the last year on your actual local computer and then you archive the past year to the NAS. And so you'll still be able to access those photos within Lightroom, but it'll just be a little bit slower over Wi-Fi. But regardless of which images are stored on the NAS, we wanna talk about how you can access those raw files and export those raw files from wherever you are in the world. So if you're on vacation and you get a phone call from a client that they really need X, Y, and Z photo ASAP, you will be able to export that image full resolution exactly like you were in your own home, but from wherever you are in the world. And that's really going to be this setup. And to do this, there are really two different options. And the one I'm gonna be showing specifically here is going to be using TailScale, just because it does not really require any special configuration on your end. It's very easy to show in tutorial and it will work very well. And it doesn't require you to do port forwarding or really understand any of your external network configurations at all. So it is very easy to use. But for more advanced users who kind of understand how networking works and understand port forwarding and kind of want some more control over their own setup and maybe have other things they need to access like maybe a printer, you can also use OpenVPN. And I will leave a link down in the description below for how to set up OpenVPN on a Synology NAS. It's very easy and you will be able to access this exactly in the same way. All right, and so now without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So right here, I've got Lightroom already up and we can see that the photography folder on my NAS is mounted and we can see the exact folder structure from last time. I did copy some new images in there just because I deleted that old catalog, but they are images right in here. And as you can see, they are stored on the NAS. But this NAS right now is only accessible when we're on our local network. So that might be via Wi-Fi or wired ethernet, but it's only accessible when we're at home or at your studio. And so to show that, I'm gonna go ahead and inject it. And now what we're gonna see is we are going to see that that photography folder, well, it's, it says it's green right now, but in a second it should update. And we can see that that photography folder is just offline and it does not know where any of these raw files are. So you can tell that by the little exclamation point in the upper right hand corner. If we click on it, it says, hey, we can't find this DNG. I can still click on it. And because I actually built one-to-one -one previews for these, I can actually still see it pretty decently, but I'm unable to do anything else. And so this is exactly what happens when you're on the road and you pull up your catalog. We can see right here that while we can see the thumbnails, if we try to export or really do any major editing to one of these images, we're not going to be able to do anything. I actually can't even edit at all because it's just a one-to-one -one preview and I've not built smart previews. So let's talk about the different ways we can fix this. And so first off, one thing I really would recommend learning is about smart previews. So I'm going to go ahead and remount that drive. So I've just remounted that drive and now we're back in. And so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to select these images and I'm going to build a smart preview of them. So for those of you who don't know, smart previews are kind of have two different use cases. One, they're very small files that you can actually generally store with your Lightroom catalog because they don't take up that much space, especially when compared to a raw file. 
and two, they also offer faster performance editing. So I've just gone ahead and for these 20 images, I have built smart previews. So now when I eject that photography folder, we're actually still going to be able to edit and export these images, albeit at a lower resolution. So if I now double click on this guy right here, we don't see that it's got the exclamation point anymore because it is actually found. So we can see up here, we do in fact have a smart preview, which means when I double click on it and try to develop it, I actually can edit it. I can change the white balance. You will see you're not gonna have nearly the normal dynamic range of your camera, but it will absolutely work just fine. You've got some stuff, you can see it's quite pixelated when I do zoom in, but it is nice to have and it loads quite quickly. You can also go into your catalog settings up here under performance. It's not the catalog settings, it's the Lightroom settings and go into performance. And if you enable this tab right here, use smart previews instead of originals for image editing, you can actually edit off of them. And especially if you have a slower computer, it is very useful to have Though one warning. These will be a lower quality than regular editing. And so your final exported version will actually be from the full resolution DNG file or raw file. But the intermediate editing that you see in the preview window will actually be done on the smart preview. And so especially if you're pulling stuff really hard, you don't really see all the detail until you export if you do have this option. Though once again, it can be very useful to have, especially when you're on the road. Okay, so that's what smart previews are. And the reason I'm bringing them up is when you are attempting to edit files, especially from across the world, your connection to NAS will be very slow and will overall not have a great experience. And so one thing I do recommend doing if you're able to, especially if you're often needing to export files far away and especially edit them is on your catalog, build smart previews for those key years or anything you really think you might need. Because what you can do is when you're remote, you can do the first edit based on the smart preview really fast and snappy kind of call everything figure out exactly what you need and then export off the full resolution file which does give a quite good experience i just want to touch on smart previews because they are quite useful when you're remote editing and just not having your full catalog with you but now let's actually talk about how we can actually get this to link up wherever we are in the world and we are going to be using free software called tailscale Tailscale is free for three users and like a hundred devices. Very, very easy to recommend. And it's still pretty cheap after that. So especially if you're a small company and you're just looking for remote access, I really recommend it. And it's just very easy to set up. And so we're going to go ahead and install Tailscale on both our computer as well as on the NAS. And what Tailscale is, is Tailscale is a point to point VPN. So what Tailscale does is it is going to connect your computer directly to the NAS wherever they are via a secure VPN tunnel. This is not like NordVPN or any other like those paid VPNs that you can use to hide from your ISP or watch Netflix in a different country. This is a secure VPN. This is designed to make sure that you don't have stuff insecurely open up on the world. And so the only person who can access the NAS is you or anybody else you authenticate with Tailscale. And so it's a very secure way to get remote access to your NAS. And Tailscale makes it very, very easy to use. You can install it on your phone, you can install it on your computer, you can install it on pretty much anything. They've got great clients for Mac, Windows, Linux, iPhone, Android, pretty much everything has a Tailscale client. And we're going to use this to be able to mount our photography folder wherever we are in the world as long as we have internet. All right, and so now to start, we need to go ahead and open up Safari or whatever your web browser is and just log into the NAS. And then just sign in with a admin account, somebody who's in the administrator group. It's the first account you created. Now we're just going to go into the package center and scroll all the way to the bottom until we see tail scale. It's got these nine dots and hit install. Okay. So now that that's installed, we're just going to go ahead and open it. And you do actually need to be in your local area network. You do need to be home to install this. So you cannot install this via quick connect. So we're just going to hit open. 
and we're going to hit log in. Now you're going to need to sign in with one of these following accounts. They do not allow you to create your own account with them, at least as far as I know. Instead, they don't want to handle authentication. They use authentication with one of these devices. So I'm just going to sign in with my Google account. All right, so if you've never set up Tailscale before, I'll leave a link to a tutorial as well to set it up that's got a little bit more in depth. And it may ask you to go ahead and give this little tutorial. But if you say skip, you can go straight into this. And this is called the console. And so you probably will not see any other machines other than the one right there. But this is essentially every device you've added into Tailscale on your account. So this for me right here is the NAS that I'm using for this video, NAS1. And we can see a few things on it. First, it has this IP address. It will always start with a 100. I don't need to go into detail about these 100 IP addresses, but Tailscale uses these 100 IP addresses for using over the Tailscale network. And so this 100 IP address will be what you use to connect to the NAS via Mac or Windows. And one thing I do wanna do is we want to disable the expiration of these. So we don't want this to ever expire. We don't wanna to have to sign into the NAS every six months or whatever they've got. Instead, we just want to sign in once and be done. So we're going to hit these three dots right here and we are going to disable key expiry. And so now you'll see that the expiration is disabled. The actual NAS will never be signed out from Tailscale. So the next thing we need to go ahead and do is download Tailscale on our local machine. So you can just hit download and you will be brought to whichever one. I've already got it installed. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open her on up. In Mac, it's gonna be on your top bar. In Windows, it's gonna be on that little dock in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. And you're gonna see, you want to go ahead and log into your Tailscale. So we need to use the same account to log into both our computer and to our NAS. And this will work with any other computers you have as well. So we're just gonna hit log in. And we're just gonna say yes, join on in, and we can just visit the console. So now we can see right here, this is my computer and this is the NAS. They're both signed in on the same account, which means they're going to be able to talk. And more specifically, they're going to be able to talk anywhere in the world. So as long as they're both on the internet, these two devices will be able to talk. All right, so now let's pretend like I'm at a coffee shop or I'm in a different country and I wanna access files on the NAS. So what we're gonna do is we're going to make sure that Tailscale is hooked up on our computer right here. And the easiest way to tell that is if you see it up here, if it says connected, you're pretty much good. Now I'm gonna do this in Mac OS Finder and then I'll talk through doing it in Windows File Explorer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit Network Devices, My Devices, and we're going to click on NAS1. This should be whatever the name of the NAS is. So if I click on NAS1, all it's gonna do is copy that 100 IP address to the clipboard. So you can see right here, 100 IP address, they're the same one. So this right here is the IP address of the NAS in the Tailscale tunnel that only exists for your account. So that means that if you're signed in on both devices with the same Tailscale account and you use this IP address, you will be able to connect it to the NAS. So in Mac OS, what we do is we go into Finder, we hit Go, Connect to Server, and then we type SMB colon slash slash and we paste in that 100 IP address. That 100 IP address is never gonna change, so we can also hit the plus tick right here, and so it will always stay the same. Now when we hit connect, it's going to say, hey, you're attempting to connect to this, and hit connect, and say remember my password, and type in your username and password for the NAS. So just like that, I can now mount the photography folder. And so now if we go back into Lightroom, we will see even though I am not on the same network, I have been able to mount this photography folder and even images that I don't have smart previews for, I will be able to actually open up and edit just like I was at home. All right, and so that was how we did it in macOS. 
And Windows is going to be very, very, very similar to how you've been mapping the drive anyway. But now you just need to make sure that your Windows PC and your Synology are signed in on the same Tailscale account. Same thing for Mac OS. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this IP address the exact same way, except it's gonna be in your lower bar down here. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to map the network drive using that IP address. So this right here, we'll leave a link down in the description below for Windows 10 and Windows 11. You're going to go open up Windows File Explorer and hit Map Network Drive. The key piece to add in here is this right here. It will ask you for a folder. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to paste in that 100 IP address in that box and then add slash photography to the end to say, hey, I want to map the photography folder. It's the exact same way you've mapped the drive in the past. It's just now we're using that 100 IP address, which will work wherever you are in the world. And so that is how you do it in Windows 10 and Windows 11. I wish there was a folder button on here, but unfortunately there is not. And the only thing you need to make sure to do is make sure it's the same drive letter when you actually did it previously, when you're on the local network, you may have to eject that one first. If you know what you're doing a little bit better, you can also use the .local domain and it may just connect. Tailscale is working on making that happen and it does work pretty well for Windows. So your drives actually may just connect anyway without doing any of this, but pasting in that 100 IP address is a surefire way to work. All right, and that's it. You're now going to be able to connect your raw files wherever you are in the world, just like that. No need to go ahead and download all the images to your computer and bring them with you. Anything you need, you can pull up from wherever you are in the world. That's going to be it for this tutorial. If you'd like to hire me for a project, there's a link down in the description for that. And if you have any other questions, put them down in the comments below. All right, have a good one. Bye.